Hey everybody. Today we're talking about quantile quantile plots or QQ plots. In this vid we're going to focus on understanding and interpreting them and the next one we'll talk more specifically about how to code them into R. So a QQ plot is just a qualitative tool for assessing whether or not sample data could plausibly have come from some specified probability distribution, usually a normal distribution. This is particularly useful if we're gearing up to do some sort of statistical inference and the procedure we're going to use is assuming that the data is coming from that distribution. So like ANOVA assumes that the data is coming from normal distributions. In a QQ plot, we put theoretical quantiles on the horizontal axis and sample quantiles on the vertical. If the probability distribution that we're looking at is a good fit for the data, then those points that we're plotting should lie more or less along the line y equals x. We should talk a little bit about what we mean by sample quantiles and theoretical quantiles. To get sample quantiles, you order your data from low to high, um, take the total sample size n and add 1, and basically divide the interval from 0 to 1 into the right number of pieces. So the arithmetic is that the rth value from the bottom is considered to be the r over n plus first sample quantile. For instance, if n equals 5, then the values in the data set when ordered from low to high are the 1 sixth, 2 sixths, 3 sixths, 4 sixths, and 5 sixths quantiles. To get the theoretical quantiles, we apply the inverse cumulative distribution function to these values, in this case 1 6, 2 6, 3 6, and so on. Let's, um, let's work through a really simple example to see how this works and then look at a few qu actual quantile quantile plots to determine how to interpret them. So here's five values, and we'd like to know whether or not they could plausibly come from a chi-squared distribution with four degrees of freedom. I've already ordered them from low to high, and on the previous slide we already determined that the sample quantiles for these values are 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, and 5, 6. Then we're going to apply the inverse cumulative distribution function for chi-squared of 4 to these values. Here's the code that I used in R to get these numbers. It's a q-chi-squared command. The sequence command inside is just generating the numbers 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, and 5, 6. And the 4 at the end is just the number of degrees of freedom. So I'm going to want to plot the um, theoretical quantiles that I just computed on the x-axis of a plot and the sample quantiles, the number I, numbers I was given, on the vertical. Here's what I get. I've also plotted the line y equals x, and here you can see that it's a reasonable fit for the data. So it seems plausible that this data were drawn from the distribution chi squared of 4. Again, QQ plots are most often used to check for normality, and in that situation you actually don't really need to think about um, which normal distribution you're looking at, what the parameters are, because if the data is drawn from any normal distribution, if you plot the theoretical quantiles for n of 0, 1, mean of 0, and standard deviation of 1 on the horizontal axis, you should still get a linear shape, just with a different slope and intercept. So, for instance, here's some data that I've just drawn at random from a normal distribution with mean 250 and standard deviation of 10. And you can see that it has a very linear shape. So, what does a QQ plot look like when we compare non-normal data? To n of 0, 1. I want to point out several notable possibilities. If the data is right skewed, then the QQ plot generally has an upward inflection, like we're seeing here. So um, in this example, I've drawn some data from a chi-squared distribution and um, then done a QQ plot comparing it to a normal distribution. And you can see that it rises upward from the, um, from the line at uh, both ends of the spectrum. By the same token, if the data is left skewed, the QQ plot tends to have a generally downward inflection. If the data is under dispersed, in other words, if it's squeezed in together more than in a normal distribution, then the QQ plot is going to have an S shape, kind of like I'm showing here. Notice that on the left end, it is above the, the sort of line of fit here, and on the right end, it is below it. Here again, I've drawn the data from a, a uniform distribution. Conversely, if the data is over-dispersed, like from a t-distribution, then the QQ plot is going to have the opposite inflection. So on the left end of this plot, the data is below the QQ line, and on the right end of the plot, the data is above the QQ line. 
Here I've drawn some data from a T distribution with two degrees of freedom that has a much fatter tail than the normal distribution. In R, the best way to generate QQ plots is with the geomqq and geomqq line commands um, and the ggplot function. So, for instance, the plot for, that we just saw in that last example was generated with this code. In, the, um, in my next vid, I'll get into some more of the details for how to generate these for different distributions and under different circumstances.